Hey kid, you want this joystick? Hello everyone, this is Stinkfist and today we're going to be setting up console port add-on so you can play WoW with your joystick. To me, this seems like an amazing prospect, especially if you want to play it laid back in the couch compared to the tryhard mode everybody is doing on their keyboard. Now, playing with the joystick does have its downsides. Console port add-on is quite overwhelming at first, but I'm here to help you out through the initial setup process and then you can finish up customizing it on your own. I'm also going to be talking about some of my philosophy behind some buttons and what abilities I'm binding where. And keep in mind that some classes uh, are just harder to play on a joystick than others. For example, I find that a hunter is really, really easy to play and set up on a joystick compared to, let's say, a warrior with its stances. It can get quite technical and quite complicated. For the initial setup, I'm going to be showing everything on my Hunter. I'll be using a couple of macros. I'll also be using a couple of macros to replace the abilities we'll be getting in Wrath. For this setup, I would recommend you use both your joystick and your keyboard and mouse because the mouse uh, gives you more precision in what you're clicking. And this uh, add-on is kind of finicky in its setup because you can accidentally rebind something or unbind something and then you can't really undo it and it can get quite messy really fast. Now, I'm using a DualShock 4, that's the PlayStation 4 joystick. And I recommend you use a PlayStation joystick if you can because the PlayStation joystick features a touchpad and the touchpad can move your mouse cursor around and also serves as a left click. So I'll select PlayStation 4 here. I'm gonna reset everything to default and then we get to this screen. The next screen is the basic setup of your emulation buttons. I would recommend you emulate your shift key with L2 or L1, depends on which one is easier for you to press. And then I would emulate Alt with triangle button. For my left and right mouse buttons, uh, we'll leave this as is for now, but we're going to come back to it later. Right here, uh, we have some cursor positions and I would pretty much uh, height cursor on stick input. This will be replaced by a crosshair later and we'll get into that. And I'd lower the default center position to 0.55. That just works best for me. Maybe you like your crosshairs to ride a bit higher or lower. Now next, uh, I keep most of these settings for my movement default. I also like to always turn my character with the camera. Once we got over the support screen, we get greeted by this basic binding setup, which I would highly recommend you avoid doing anything here because it's really basic and it doesn't do any justice to this add-on and it just messes a whole bunch of other stuff up. Once we get into the bindings tab, we get greeted by a whole lot of new stuff. And this can be quite overwhelming at first, as it was for me. I would highly recommend you use character-specific keybinds. And if you have that enabled, it will show up uh, like this, key bindings for character name. But for now, we're going to skip most of this binding and go into some interface options. Now, we're just going to bat the options right out of the park at first. Uh, I recommend you just follow along with this. And then later, once you get a bit familiarized with everything, with playing the game on a joystick, you can modify everything in here. Now, first off, we have some accessibility options, and these are pretty nice. This add-on features multiple ring menus if you want to set it up like that. Our first ring menu kind of scoops up all the utility items that get thrown in your bags. And this is the option for that. So for example, I need to do a bombing run and I get back a bombs for that quest. That is going to be automatically bound to my ring menu. And we'll get into the ring menu really soon. This is a pretty smart feature and you can pretty easily remove the items that get bound to the ring menu. So automatically selling junk is a really good addition. 
especially if this is your only add-on. However, I'd recommend using a couple of other add-ons as well. Right here, I'm using Bagnon and Leatrix Maps and Leatrix Plus because these are just some essentials that I like. However, I did a whole video going over and highlighting some amazing add-ons that you can use with this one or on their own and you can go check this out right here. I recommend you also enabling the crosshair. You can pick some radioactive color, maybe turn down the opacity a bit. The interact button I like to bind on R3. The interact button serves kind of as your right click but also has a bit more function. You can loot stuff off the ground with it, uh, you can interact with NPCs with it and I find when I'm moving my camera around it just feels the most natural to press down R3. Now, if you at any point get lost and can't find your way back to the settings, just press escape and go under system and go into controls and you'll be right back where we left off. The interface cursor options pertain to this interface cursor right here. So I would suggest keeping all of this as default. The mouse settings are something I think I keep as default. Also, the radial menu options are pretty good. I suggest you move the radial menu primary stick to camera stick because to me it feels really, really natural to use the right stick to highlight things in the radial menu. The remove button only pertains to removing items from the menu and this can be, I think, default R1. Let's look at the rings. Now, by default, there should be a ring, but for me, there is none. So I'll just create one. In my utility uh, ring, I want to be putting some utility items. For example, any quest items uh, will go in here, but I also want uh, my mount, my hearthstone, and my food and water. You can also bind macros. And then we have the key binding for our utility ring. This I like to set as up on the D-pad. In reality, this is how it should look. So I press and hold up and this thing pops out and then I can use my right stick to highlight whatever I want to be using. Now in this settings tab we can pretty much change any settings that have been set in the initial setup and uh, any other preferences. The action bar tab hosts an interesting aspect of this add-on. In this tab you basically set up the UI of your action bar. This default layout works really well for me and I'll just be sticking with this for now. Now it's time to do some bindings. First of all, I would want you to not worry about all this stuff on the left since this is quite overwhelming and God knows how it works. We'll just do everything through these menus right here and we'll start by taking a look at our action bar. There's our action bars and as you can tell it's a hot mess of just stuff. What I would recommend you do is you move everything off and unbind all the hotkeys that are pre-bound. For example I click on this and then I right click the key bind and it removes it. This is a bit tedious and I feel your pain but trust me it is totally worth it to work with a clean slate. Okay so now that we've cleared everything of any binds, we won't be binding any abilities quite yet. I'm going to save this, so in case uh, we mess up anything, we can come back to this point later on. Now I'm going to be clearing up uh, some of these default bindings. Now under special, left and right mouse button work fine for me. However, I don't use the rate cursor, so I'll unbind this. I'm also going to unbind the utility ring and the extra action button. In the action bar, you can find a lot of stuff for like pet actions and under add-ons, I don't have much, so I won't be touching this. Under camera, I'm going to unbind, zoom in and zoom out, since I like to set my camera with my mouse and pretty much leave it. I'm going to unbind open chat. In the interface uh, panel, I like to toggle my game menu with the options button. And that would be your map by default. And that's the old start button. And I like to open my map with the share button. So that would be the old school select. Opening up my talents and spell book and character pane, I do all of that through the game menu. Let's save and I'll show you that real quick. When I press options now, 
I get this thing, which is the interface and under character, I have all our tabs. And under game, I have the map and quest log and so on and so on. So actually I wanna open all bags with L2 and share. The only thing I like to remap in the movement is the jump button. I like it to be L3. I think uh, that works well since this is not a platforming game and you don't jump often. I don't like to toggle auto run since I don't auto run with my joystick. I only do that on my keyboard. And lastly, we have targeting. Targeting is one of the most important aspects of playing this game in PvP especially. In PvE it's a bit more relaxing to target stuff and I like to bind. So my left and right d-pad buttons are just targeting buttons so I can cycle through enemies. I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna collapse all these menus. And now we have everything ready to bind our actual attacks and abilities. So for the first action page i would recommend just binding square x circle l1 r1 and r2 that's just six buttons without modifiers that you can access really really easily the philosophy what i bind behind these buttons is i usually bind some of the mo more spammy buttons or some of the more important buttons such as kick for a rogue or something that i would like to access really really fast or that i would like to access often on my first action page i like to bind stuff without modifier on my bottom left bar i like to bind stuff that uses one modifier for example if i hold down l2 and then square l2 x l2 circle and so on and i like to mirror this layout so it matches it neatly now under that i use the triangle modifier for me triangle and x is kind of tricky to click so i just don't use it however i do use triangle circle and triangle square and then for our last binds we can bind l2 and triangle pressed at the same time and as you can see you have a lot of space available to bind stuff and you have a lot of button combinations you can work through and pretty much any character can bind pretty much all of its abilities quite competently as a novice at using this add-on for me it was quite hard to remember where certain abilities were and that's why i would recommend just starting out with some basics on some face buttons and on some shoulder buttons and maybe working your way through the modifiers as you progress through your joystick gaming experience i pretty much bound kill command into a macro into every spell now, to give you some basic ideas, I'm going to use the unmodified face and uh, shoulder buttons as my main attacks, pretty much. For example, I want my aim shot on R1 and I would like my chimera shot on R2. On L1, I would like my arcane shot and on X, I would like to spam my steady shot. Kill shot would be on circle and on square, I like to bind pet attack. I'm going to bind concussive shot on triangle and circle and I'm going to be binding wing clip on triangle and square. I also like to batch certain uh, abilities like this so it just makes a whole lot more sense for me to have everything under one wing. For example for my stances I like to use L2 modifier with my face buttons. Now my stings I like to bind with L2 and my shoulder buttons. So really important one is Serpent Sting, then the Viper Sting and Scorpid Sting is going to become really important for Wrath of the Lich King. On my triangle and shoulder button modifiers, we can bind some more head stuff. Also right here, I'm going to be binding uh, my traps and I'm going to do that with triangle and the D-pad button. Frost Trap on down, Freezing Trap on up, fire trap on this and explosive trap on this we are also missing the trap launchers from red lich king but you can for example bind that on l2 plus d-pad now on these really complicated ones i like to bind my macro for pet resurrection and pet feeding and this would pretty much cover the basics of binding a hunter setup. I have enough here that allows me to pretty carelessly play my hunter. And for example, this pig is something I want to kill. So I would just send my path at it. 
and then start pressing buttons. The neat thing is you can hold down your modifier button and it changes your uh, button layout. So you can see what is bound where and that way you can easily learn how to access your spells. And that pretty much does it for this basic setup tutorial. I hope this really helps you and expands your mind towards just playing with the joystick. It's really fun, it's really enjoyable once you set it up right. Again, thank you so much for watching and please do leave a like or share this with a friend or anyone that's interested in playing with the joystick and let me know how it goes in the comments below. See you around in the next one.